In the ever-evolving world of cybersecurity, a dangerous new malware looms large. InfoStealer malware. Among the most notorious is Redline, a sophisticated tool designed to hijack your most sensitive data. What sets InfoStealer malware apart? It's not just about stolen credentials. This malware can extract an entire database of your saved browser information. The implications are alarming. Imagine every login detail from social media to banking falling into the wrong hands. But there is a silver lining here. There's a lot of cutting edge technology out there that allows us to detect and analyze these types of threats in real time. There's one in particular that I wanna look at today that provides actionable intelligence and gets us an advantage over the attackers that are out there. So let's jump right into the world of InfoStealer malware. Okay, so let's talk about my exposure to Redline. I get InfoStealer malware thrown at me all the time, and usually it comes into my inbox for my Cyber Mentor advertising profile. And that's because if you scroll down in the description of any of my videos, it says, hey, sponsorship inquiries, go ahead and just email me at info at the cybermentor.com. And boy, do I get a lot of emails, but there's one in particular that stands out from a couple of years ago that I want to share with you because it's funny, but it also gave an opportunity to actually dig into some of this red line slash info stealer malware that's out there. Okay, and welcome to my wonderful PowerPoint presentation because I do not have the editing skills or the editing budget of John Hammond quite yet, but I did want to share with you this screenshot of this email that I got that was totally not malware. So we come in here and it's from this Marcelo Burlon, which is funny because it's spelled B-U-R-L-O-N here, but B-O-U-R-L-O-N here, whatever. Okay, so A, we are the advertising manager. They are the advertising manager, Marcelo Burlon brand. Okay, it's an Italian brand. They're explaining this to me. And this is an immediate red flag because you know, if you know me, that you do not want me wearing your brand as sponsorship. I am just not fashionable in any sense of form. So it comes in here and they're saying, hey, how much does integration cost? And also they misspell it again. So you can see B-U-R-L-O-N versus B-O-U-R-L-O-N. Okay, whatever. But this is the funny part here. It says, we won't ask you to download strange files because I am the real advertising manager of Marcelo Berlan. <laughs> and I just find that really comical. Let's briefly talk about how this works and we'll leave these PowerPoints alone. So you were asked to download a totally legitimate file, right? And when you download that file, you get the zip and you extract the contract for your agreement. You open this malicious Word doc and the exploit runs and it steals a lot of data. And you can see from the screenshot here, we've got passwords and cookies and autofills and all kinds of things that it steals. And I'd rather show you a real example. So let's take a look at that. And here's a great example of a dump from Redline or from an info stealer. If you come in here and you look, it's got a bunch of information. Like it says, hey, what's our user information here? What are we stealing? Okay, so we've got IP address, build ID, we've got location information, hardware ID, all kinds of information about the end user and the hardwares that are on this, etc. Uh, we've got processes that were running at the time when this was actually executed. Of course, the big, big, big item are the passwords. You could see here the different passwords that are in here, like Okta for company portal or for HubSpot. And oh, Jeremy is just getting absolutely compromised here with all of this and it's just stealing it from edge and there's a bunch of data that's in here and all of this is fake data by the way don't try to replicate this i mean if you want to go sign up for fake email accounts more power to you uh, but it could tell you the installed software installed browsers um even interesting things like hey what are your discord tokens right and then what cookies do you have here and it can tell you all the cookies that are there for you. And this is actually something that is very real world. I can give you an immediate example of this because we did a video on it not that long ago. You remember in the news when Linus Tech Tips was hacked, my guess, 99% confidence or higher here, is that it was some sort of info stealer or redline stealer because they had multi-factor authentication, they had all these things in place, they got an advertising email similar to what we're talking about now. Somebody executed it and they stole the cookies from the browser session and were able to bypass multi-factor because this doesn't just steal credentials, it steals cookies as well, among other things. So this malware isn't just to attack YouTubers and take over their accounts. It is to take credentials and other data from users. And that data typically ends up on the dark web, in dark markets and for sale. So this could be information of yours or somebody you know for sale out there. 
And this can lead to account compromises, bank account information being stolen, social media accounts being stolen, all of this stuff. And it's really, really, really bad. So getting all this malware thrown at me has led me down this malware analysis rabbit hole of sorts. And it's led me to a few different tools, but one just continuously stands out among the rest. And let me explain that just a little bit further. So it all started out with this video from John Hammond. If you have not subscribed to John Hammond, please go do so right now and then come back to this video. But he's using this tool called Flare, which I hadn't heard of before. And he was exploring ransomware out on the dark web, but he was using Flare to do it. And he was looking up different events that were happening and different ransomware and like crypto locker type events. And he was actually going to these sites on the dark web and exploring them. And this is all data aggregated in real time from Flare. I actually saw something literally today from searching through data that then showed up on LinkedIn later on about an attack. And that attack I first saw on Flare before I actually saw it on social media. It was really crazy. And then back to my trusty PowerPoint, I got this message from a coworker and he said, Jake from blank, blank being a client of ours, was raving about this product that does OSINT and all this other crap. Leave me here in case we ever need this as a service. And he links me to Flare. And I keep seeing Flare over and over. And I said, I've got to go and actually look this up. So let's explore Flare a little bit, see what OSINT they do and all this other crap they do as well. Okay, so I am on the Flare dashboard and I have this set to my tenant of the cybermentor.com. And I'm just doing this as a trial run. I'm coming in here and just looking at my exposure. And you get this dashboard insight right here where it says, hey, what are your recent events? What's your exposure score? Really, what's your risk and what's out there about you? So you can see mostly everything looks like exposed source code events, which they could be false positive, though there are some things here for criminal underground events. Uh, nothing for anything else. No leak credentials or sensitive data, which is good. And it tells you, hey, what are your high risk scores out there? It looks like I don't have anything that's high risk right now. So that's pretty good. I can click around and look at some of the insights and my history and look at some of my issues that may be out there. But really, it's mostly due to repository. So I don't have that big of a footprint, at least under the Cyber Mentor domain. But we can come in here and look at my identifiers or even some actions that may be happening out there. Uh, so we can click through and look at different events as well. This is the one that's most interesting. Let me scroll out just a little bit there so we could see this a little bit better. But we can look for my tenant, right, and see what are the events that are actually occurring for me. And I could see that a lot of this is GitHub. So they're just saying, hey, you may have some exposure or code events out there on GitHub. That's fine, but we can come in here and actually sort this a little bit differently. Like I do have the Cyber Mentor in here, but I did put TCMSEC in here as well. So if I wanted to like click on TCMSEC, I can look at what exposure events I have in here. I could sort by severity as they're coming through. Like I don't maybe care too much about low events or informational events, and maybe I just care about uh, the highs and the, the severe ones or the criticals. And I don't have any here for that tenant either. So that's nice to know, at least about me. So this is really good if you have a company and you're wanting to monitor threats in real time, see if there's any uh, ransomware against your organization, any leaked credentials, anything that may be out there. Very nice. And you can do this against like a domain. So if somebody came up in a breach for TCMSEC, it would actually show up in that breach and say, OK, here are the credentials that are found or what breach they were found in. And that was really nice as well. Now, something I saw John Hammond do, and I won't go too much into it because this is a different technique than what I'm covering in the video, but you can use global search features here. And I'm not going to show anything recent because I think that would be detrimental, but you can come in here and do a wild card. And one of the features that he did was he came in here and he said, hey, I want to look at not lookalike domains, which is really cool, by the way. If somebody spins up a lookalike domain or a phishing domain, you can actually click on that and apply and Flare will do takedowns for you, which is very nice as well. And we can come through here, look at lead credentials, open web, same thing with illicit networks. Like if we just want to look at ransomware leaks, we totally can. You can look at the market, forum posts, all kinds of things, and you just hit apply to this. And then if you come in here and select dates, we could come here and do date ranges as well. I'm not going to scroll down any further. This one, for example, was from Lockbit and it was from 2022. So I think that's old enough. And it says, hey, this optoma.com was under Lockbit ransomware. And it gives you uh, all the information. It, it's going to show up. Look at this. It shows up with leaked files. Uh, it could give you a summary of the content. It shows you the Lockbit URL. So if you wanted to go to the dark web, you could actually navigate there and look at it. That's very interesting. 
Uh, the content, again, that may be there, the leaked files, you can click through a lot of this. There's even an AI assistant that will just generate and tell you what you're looking at in case you need some information or anything like that. And I find that very useful as well. So there's a lot of things that you can do here, but let's get back to the purpose and the reason that I even showed up on Flare was because I was digging very deep into this info stealer malware. Okay, and so I am searching for scatter halt, and this is a demo slash dummy type leaked data that's out there. I don't want to search for any real events just in case there is information that would be displayed or very critical. I don't want to do that. So we could search for scatter halt in here. I'm just searching actually on the dark web. I could search this for open web and leak credentials as well. I'm not going to search for look like domains. But this does give you a ton of information about InfoStealer and InfoStealer logs. Here's one of them, for example. So I'm on this one here where it says Patrick at scatterholt.com and it shows the host and it shows, hey, here's a summary. There's a leaked steer log in here. Now, if I go to try to download this, I'm actually not going to be allowed to, which is probably pretty good. It says due to its sensitive nature, this download uh, or infected files has to be activated on your account. I think that's probably pretty smart. So I'm not going to download the steer log here and show it, but we've seen an example of what one looks like. In reality, if you are an organization and you're coming through and you think that one of your users, like say this was Patrick at TCM-sec.com, if he had been compromised, I want to know about that. And then I'm going to reach out to Flair and say, I need to download these logs because I need to know what's in them and I need to alert our employee as well. And this would be great to see. So you can see some content preview, like here's the email, here's one host example, and then you've got the username and the password here. And so this gives you all of that detail and you can come through and actually look at some of the resources that are in here, uh, log information, et cetera, et cetera. OK, and there's just so many examples like here's one from Okta again, same thing. And what's crazy is that Flare has over 46 million Steeler logs, 46 million. That's how many times people have been breached by this malware. It is crazy ridiculous. So this is really interesting software that is out here. And it's just awesome. From us, we're going to be a client. And, and from an OSINT terms, like I could come in here in another real world example. Today, I was in events. And I was talking to a client and the client said, hey, we've been seeing this really weird IP address show up and we're having outbound traffic. Can you just look up that IP address and see if you see anything? Do you do you know anything about this? And so immediately, instead of going to like Shodan or another site, I came to Flare and I just searched in here and was able to say yes or no definitively that we have seen this IP address in malicious activity before. That's just one use case. You can come in here and search for people. You could search for your domain. You could search for a lot of things. So from a defense standpoint, this is an incredible tool full of tons and tons of data that will make your life a lot easier from not only your company's exposure, but from a threat hunting exposure in all kinds of other areas. Well, that's it for this video. If you made it this far, comment down below and say reappearing glasses because my glasses definitely were off in the beginning and then somehow showed up and that's just the magic of editing. But definitely go check out Flare. I'll leave a link in the description below. We at TCM Security are absolutely going to be a client moving forward. I think the tool is great and I found so many use cases already for it that it just makes my life that much easier. So go check out Flare. If you like the video, as always, like, subscribe, comment down below. You already know what to comment if you really made it this far. And I will see you over in the next video. So until next time, my name is Heath Adams, aka The Cyber Mentor, and I thank you for joining me. Peace out.